What's going on guys, this is Matei with Tech Vitamins and today I'm going to be reviewing the uh, HD Omni for Pro Tools a little bit and uh, showing you some tips and tricks, some things you may not uh, be able to read in the manual uh, when you get this unit or you know if you're not a pro engineer it may take you a little while to figure out how to get this set up. Uh, but anyways I've uh, upgraded to Pro Tools HD Native uh, a few months back and I uh, chose the HD Omni as my interface. There's of course other interfaces that you can get with the HD Native card or the HDX card, um, but this was the cheapest setup, so I went with that. Uh, it, it's it's an awesome interface. Um, the AMD converters will definitely give you a noticeable uh, upgrade from, let's say, the Mboxes that you may be used to or other interfaces that are not accompanied with the um, HD cards from uh, Avid. So the, I definitely love the unit. So the, um, in terms of the software setup, uh, it was an easy installation. Uh, the HD card itself was pretty easy to install, which is a PCIe card into into my computer, and um, you know it ran smoothly with the Pro Tools. Pro Tools HD installed smoothly as well. But it was took me a little while to figure out how to get a talkback mic function into my booth for my artists, and then also how to get a dedicated or separate headphone mix um, routed out of the Pro Tools INO setup uh, in, in, into my mix session here. So that's what I'm going to focus on. Um, I want to go first into the uh, hardware setup which is the first thing you got to set up before you can run this unit and um, I want to highlight the monitor tab. Uh, the manual will tell you that first you have to set up the monitor tab Without that, you're not going to be able to get a, you know, any sound coming out of your speakers or really get your in, ins and outs uh, working within Pro Tools or Sense. So, basically, uh, I'm, uh, my outputs right here are in the main control room path. Is I chose channel one and two in the analog section um, because I actually have a DB25 uh, snake in the back, which gives me um, eight outputs out. And I'm going to get to that a little bit later as well. That's how I set up my headphone mix. But um, I chose channel one and two as the left and right, and the alternate uh, control room path I have set to none. Now, you don't really need to check any of this stuff. You can look in the manual what it can do, but uh, that's pretty much what you got to do to get started. Um, the analog outputs, you know, make sure that um, you select the correct radio button here whether it's uh, an input that you plug in from the back or it's going to be a speaker oh, I'm sorry the output is going to be going into another device or it's going to be, be coming out of, out of speakers or headphones because this can make this will make a noticeable difference and you don't want to kill anybody's ears or um, your speakers as well so I just set all mine to a speaker output because really all my outputs are running into either speakers or headphones um, I'm not running outputs out of my Omni into anything else. And the analog ins, uh, kind of the same deal here, and this will kind of depend on your mic or the preamp that you're running, but um, I kept mine all at default, my four channels, and I'm not setting any limiters uh, through this interface, which, by the way, I'm sure you'll probably know that the HD Omni comes with two preamp channels, um, which is their solid state preamps. And you can either select these settings directly on the interface itself or you can go into this hardware setup um, as well and set that up. Um, and the main, you know, basically here you're just uh, defining your channels one through four inputs and then outputs which this will kind of take effect in your um, input and output menu in Pro Tools 10 or 9 or 8 is really going to be the same thing but you notice here that my 7 and 8 I set it to analog 7 and 8 and that's because I'm actually using these two outputs to run my headphone mix out into I mean through my snake into the booth so the artist in the booth can you know hear a separate mix if I needed them to hear one um, in the booth otherwise I'm not selecting anything for 3 and 4 or 5 and 6 now if I wanted to utilize my five and six, you know, three or four outputs, let's say, to route into a compressor or any any outboard, um, you know, analog compressor limiter, whatever it may be, I will have to select those. So they basically become enabled in my ins and out uh, menu. 
and then I can use them. And my one and two is my monitor. One, this is pretty much set up like this by default. This will ensure that your monitors, if plugged in through the back in the quarter inch monitor uh, or the TRS jacks, will actually produce sound out of your speakers or your monitors. So again, monitor tab is the first one you want to look at and let's get into the inputs and outputs uh, real quick. So going into the input and output menu, um, again, you know, you can, in the inputs, I quickly um, just labeled my different preamps that I got going through here. So that way, um, when I'm switching mics in the booth, I know which channel to put them into. But you know, this is going to be according to your setup. Um, the outputs here, again, analog seven and eight. I named it he uh, headphones because it's going to be my headphone mix. And in the bus section, this is really how you set up your session. And you can check on uh, another video that I made a couple months back, which shows you how to set up a session template. Um, you know, which basically. You can see it on the screen here, but it has all my submixes, my mix buses, individual instrument groups, vocal groups, and so forth. So, uh, you know, again, but here you will also want to make a pair of your buses the headphone mix. And now I will show you that um, in the mix interface as we see it. But, you know, keep this in mind because if you're used to using your uh, Mbox 2 or 3, whichever version it was or um, any other interface these labels may change and your input and output menus as well as buses may change also so check this every time you install a new interface um, so let me go ahead and get out of this window and this is really where the headphone setup comes in um, also the talkback mic into the booth so unfortunately the uh, HD Omni interface doesn't have a talkback function with generally in other studios you can see it as a switch that the you know producer engineer will switch back whenever he wants to talk to uh, the artist in the booth um, so it doesn't have one of those so the way you have to do it is temporarily um, basically use up one of your channels so you're already kind of limited by only having four channels in this interface but you're gonna be even more limited because you have to use up one of the channels in the back to use as a dedicated um, old time channel for your basically talkback mic and right here what I did is I created um, a mono uh, auxiliary which is the CR control room mic and you see that right there you would do that by going to if you don't know new you go to mono auxiliary track auxiliary input and then you create it so that's exactly what I did and I chose my channel 4 which is my Audio Technica wireless uh, mic setup here and you can see the faders uh, the, the volume level moving here up and down because this is a dedicated channel for this mic so I don't have to hit record for the artist to hear me like you would on a mono um, in, uh, I'm sorry audio track when you're actually recording from a mic but this is running at all times so you also have to get used to the fact that if you don't want the artist to hear you or hear any of the control room noise that may be out here that you gotta hit mute um, and a lot of times what I do is take this channel and kinda slide it you see here here's my like female vocals for example so I'll keep it right next to the uh, channel let's say that's right here that I'm hitting record on and I'm tracking it through the mic because as soon as I hit that, I have it right, you know, handy next to the track, and I hit mute so the artist can't hear me. Um, so that's the uh, control room mic or the talkback mic, and you notice that the uh, output of this is going into the analog seven and eight channel headphone mix, which is going directly into the artist's headphones in the booth. But I also created a send to send it to my main mix bus so I can hear it as well um, you know I can hear myself when I have my headphones on and I'm tracking um, any recording I want to be able to hear myself if I didn't set up this uh, s send right here into my mix bus which is basically my ultimate end channel right here um, I wouldn't be able to hear myself through the headphones so that was an important thing to do and let me get to the headphone mix right here again what I did is created uh, th this time I created a stereo um, auxiliary 
and you can also do a mono you don't have to take up two channels seven and eight to send to a snake and again take up two input jacks just to send that signal to the headphones you can do a a, a mono channel and you can split it either in the booth or out of the back of the omni it's it's your preference but i created a auxiliary um, stereo track right here and again the input of this is going to be a bus that i created which i showed you earlier you have to just create a bus and you don't have to name it but i, I named mine headphone mix that's the bus that is going into and then um again the output is going to be my analog 7 and 8 headphones so this is going to be going directly into the artist's uh, headphones and i can control with this fader how loud they're going to be able to hear what they're hearing so that's useful now um how do i get all, if I want all the sound to go into the uh, artist's headphones, then again, I can, I'll can i place my send, which I created here. And this send is um, the headphone mix send. So basically, anything out of this uh, last mix bus channel that I've set up is going to the headphones. Now, you don't have to have it there. If you wanted a separate mix, you notice that sometimes I'll uh, deactivate this send right there. And I will have a separate headphone mix send right here on that particular track that we're you know the audio track that we're tracking through the mic so they can only hear themselves for example or I may have another send right here on my instrumental uh, bus which I don't have currently but you know so you get the point so it's a combination of sends and creating auxiliary channels with the appropriate inputs to get both the uh, separate headphone mix and um, the talkback mic function which is kind of you know, you uh, took me a little while to figure this out. It's not in the manual. Couldn't really find it on the internet. So again, I thought I'd create this video for you guys, uh, for those that have HD Omni, to show you, you know, how I got it set up. If you have any questions about this unit, um, you know, write it in the comment section. I'll be happy happy to respond. Other than that, there's a lot of useful information in the manual itself, and you'll find uh, some useful information on the Avid um, forums as well. But I'll be happy to tell you what I've learned about it and how I'm using it. And I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks, guys. See you later.